Hello and welcome back to another Writerly Witterings with me, Michael Jex, the tea-drinking author who's just, sadly, finished his cup of tea. Never mind. Right, today, what am I talking about? I have a number of things I need to get cracking with and today I thought I'd just answer some questions which people keep sending me still about this thing, the Astra House Free Write. Why talk about this thing? Well, a number of people will keep writing and saying, that's outrageous, it's ridiculously overpriced. I could buy one of these cheap hoojits that went out of business 10 years ago for $25. Yes, you could. If you want to buy stuff that failed because it was not good enough and therefore they're selling off old stock for $25, buy them, buy several of them, it's great. However, if you are a serious person about writing and you want to write lots, then you have to pay money to get the right tool. And this is definitely one of the right tools. What is it? It is the Astro House Free Write. Astro House now have several different devices. There's the Free Write. There is the, I've got to look on the internet now to make sure of this and not get the names wrong. There is the Traveller, which is a much smaller version. It's got the keyboard and then it folds in half. It's a clamshell design. And they've now got something called the Alpha, which is smaller again. It's not a clamshell. And it's only going to be, well, as it stands right now, $290. And it's just a basic keyboard with a liquid crystal display, which is light. You can carry it with you. And it's... A good looking little device. This is much bigger, much heavier, and it's been going for a lot longer. If I look at my own YouTube channel, I first reviewed this 2016 or 2017. Oh, it could actually have been Astro House Freewrite Review, the first one, 5th of October 2017. And I've done a few videos since then, which you can see if you're interested. What do I like about this thing? I like the fact it is sturdy. It's quite heavy. When I go out and about, I can have this on my lap and I can type with it better than I could type with a standard keyboard at my desk because it is a weighty device. It will sit on your lap and it won't move. It's got a superb keyboard with cherry keys, which makes a bit of noise, but that's because every key is individually sprung and it works well. It has this dinky little screen, which comes up with pictures of different writers when it goes into resting mode. So here's Edgar Allan Poe. And here's uh, the bloke who did science fiction stuff. Can't remember his name. Isn't that sad? Anyway, it comes up with a different picture. And how it works is you've got diff three different folders, A, B, and C. You design how you want to set them up. You've got Wi-Fi on, off, and finding simple and you have a straight keyboard when you turn it on it comes up with a blank screen that you can type on and down here is an information screen that tells you everything that's going on all the time so you can for example have it set up to the date dropbox set up and the email address that you are currently working with and then if you hit this key, the special key, it will change that so it brings up a clock or it brings up the word count or it brings up the time you've been typing or anything you want really. Just circles, toggles all the way through those things. You have two red buttons. When you press the two red buttons together, you create a new document. How many documents will this thing hold? I've no idea, but thousands I assume. And the big complaint, and the one that always gets questions sent to me, is but how do you get information off this 
and onto your computer because if there's one failing this has it is that it is not a text editor it is a straightforward creation typing device you type things they go up on the screen and whether it's got misspellings bad grammar or anything else it stays there in this device's memory now that means obviously that you have to edit things but you can't edit on that because there aren't even any cursor keys no way of editing apart from using a typewriter approach because you have a backspace key and if you hit the backspace key it will delete letter by letter if you hit the backspace with the red key then it will delete word by word and you can highlight different things you can delete larger sections if you want but you can't really edit. You can't hop back to the middle of the previous paragraph and delete A, B, T and put back in A, N, D. Doesn't happen. So how do you work with these things? Well, the main thing is that is the big benefit of it. Now, for me, for example, I now have to start a book which I've got to write before the end of June. That means I've got two and a half months. I need to be as creative as possible. If I'm writing, what I always find is I can be typing on my Apple here, got my lovely Apple iMac. I can type away, I can create, and then I spot a typo two paragraphs before. So I stop creating, I nip back and adjust that typo. That means for me that I'm switching my brain from straight creation mode into admin and correction and editing mode. And it slows me down. It slows me down a lot. Now, when I used to take an Apple laptop with me to meetings in London, I'd sit on the train for three hours up, three hours back, and I would try to use that laptop, and I never could. There were several reasons why it didn't work for me. One was the simple fact that the weight of the screen, you've got the laptop base, you've got the screen that you can adjust, and the weight of the screen was glass and always kept seeming to want to pull the laptop over. So I had to spend most of my time with the base of my hand resting on the front of the um, laptop itself, holding it in place so I could type. And because of that, I used to find I could type three to five hundred words on a two to three hour train trip. First time I took this with me up to London, I typed three and a half thousand words on the way up. Three and a half thousand. Ten times the productivity. And that's because this sits firmly on your lap and you can type no need to worry about it moving around or anything it doesn't it just stays there because it's got a certain amount of weight it's a solid metal frame and you can read the screen perfectly happily from any angle you don't have to bend your head down and give yourself a sore neck it can just work now that's all good but the other side that i found with this I mean, apart from the advantages of a really good keyboard, um, the excellent screen that you can read at any angle, the thing is you've got, or in my case, I've got creation mode and edit mode. If I'm jerked out of creation mode, it takes me a while to get back into it. So if I, with this, I don't have that sudden jarring. With this, I just type and it can be complete garbage. That doesn't matter. One of the things about being a writer is you realise that a lot of the time you are typing complete garbage. Very sad. Usually I manage to edit it all out. But with this, I can keep typing. I can get many... I, it doubles my standard typing speed on a usual keyboard on my usual computer. Because it's double my typing speed, even if I have to delete a quarter of those words, I'm still going faster. So with this new book I'm just about to start, this is the keyboard I'm going to be using. Now, OK, so I've typed up a whole bunch of words. They're all sitting on this free write. Well, what do you do then? Now, there's two things you can do. The first is Astro House, for some reason, I can only assume because they thought it was a good opportunity to get into cloud storage, Everything you type on your free write is synced over Wi-Fi 
to their own storage systems, which are called Postbox. On Postbox, when you log in with your standard email address, it will take you through, password protected obviously, and you can see your documents under folder A, B and C. Thrilling. So you've got those things up there, but the great thing is you can synchronize them with Dropbox or any of the other things you want. So when I've typed up all my things on my free write, I then have Dropbox set up as an additional storage device on my Apple computer. So I go straight into Dropbox and I can call those documents up on my Apple and then edit them. I just import them into Nicest Writer Pro and you, because that's my standard text editor and I edit those documents there. It is very straightforward. If you don't want to do that, an alternative approach, which I have done a few times, is you just get a USB-C cable. It plugs into the charging cable slot at the back of the free write. And then the free write materialises on your computer as an additional disk drive with three folders on it. And you can suck the data down the line onto your computer from there. What you cannot do is backwards synchronise, so you can't send the documents from your Apple onto the free write. And why would you want to? You can't text edit on the free write, so what on earth would be the point of using it as an additional storage device? Plus, if you do that, then you're getting into all of the headaches about synchronising the wrong um, version, the wrong yeah, just version, the wrong version of whatever the document is you're working on. Not good. So you can't do that. Now, what this all means is that you can type things up on your free write. You can call them up onto your computer very easily, call them straight into whatever document you want and edit them there. And then you have the ability to import them into any document when you're sending them off to an editor, whatever you might be doing. In my case, I will always import them straight into Scrivener because Scrivener is my usual editing area for books. I mentioned Nicest Writer. That's my final copy um, editor or the thing I use for correspondence, producing text messages and so on. So you can call it straight into whichever word processor you want on your computer, edit them, amalgamate them into other documents so you've got one large book or whatever it might be, your thesis, your dissertation, anything you want, and then whack it out from there. What will then happen, or what you'll then find is it still remains on Postbox. Is this a problem? Not really. It's just a bit of a pain that you've got to go into Postbox and delete all of those documents. Perfectly straightforward. You go into each document, type shred, and it deletes them. Or if you want, you can archive them so you can go back to them later. Personally, I don't bother because what would be the point? I've already got a copy on Dropbox. I've got a copy on my computer, so I don't care. What are the drawbacks? Well, you do have to go through into, po into their Postbox system and delete your files from there. Once you've deleted them from there, they're also wiped off your free write. So it's a slightly convoluted approach, but that's the only negative you can say about it. In terms of other things, the free write means that I can type up faster. I get documents typed up much more quickly. Um, it is, to me, superbly portable. Yes, it weighs a bit, but it doesn't weigh any more than a laptop. Uh, OK, it weighs more than my MacBook Air. But I can type on this. My MacBook Air really is redundant. It's useful when I go abroad because I can do emails on it. This is the device I use when I'm traveling up to London or anything else because it works. It's also the device I use for creating things because I can go away from my desk here where emails come in, telephone calls come in and all the other things that happen. I can take this into the sitting room, sit in my armchair and type there to my heart's content and I will still type faster because it's a good keyboard, it sits on my lap, it is comfortable to type on, it's just a superb device. Now other people will come back to me, I know, because they do every time I do a video about these things and they'll say, oh, 
But it's a ridiculous sum of money. Who would want to spend that sort of amount on a machine that really isn't any better than a simple, cheap laptop? And a laptop will do a lot more. And how much is it? Well, the free write is £600 now. That's not cheap. The Traveller, the portable device, is 480 the little mini box, the Alpha, is 292 if you order it, pre-order it, which is a nice dinky looking little device. It'll fit in a suitcase. It's about the size of an iPad, maybe a little bit larger because it's got a full-size keyboard, um, but it's a bit fatter than an iPad. So, 600 odd pounds. That's not to be sniffed at, is it? So there's two things to say there, and that is, I don't want a laptop. Now, if I am to buy a laptop, it will almost certainly have to be an Apple because then it'll be compatible with my iMac. I don't want to have to relearn using Windows and DOS. So if I'm going to use something to create on, and I want it to be portable, it's got to be another Apple. And Apple computers are a lot more money than £600. And let's just look at the viability. With an Apple computer, I'll be slower to type. I can't get on with those little dinky, slim keyboards. I hate them. I like real keyboards that make a noise and I can feel. My typing speed will be halved by using an Apple at the very best. If I'm sitting on a train trying to type on my lap, it will be significantly worse than halved. I might get 10 to 20% of the words that I would with the free write. The screen on an Apple I find very difficult on a train because it gets too many reflections. With a liquid crystal or e-ink type screen that you get on the free write, you don't have that. So I could pay more money, yes, to get a laptop, which would do the same job. But it would do many more things I don't want. It would do emails and so on, which I don't want on the train. It would do spreadsheets. I don't want spreadsheets. I don't use them ever. It would give me another word processor. It would give me pages, which I never use. I have it pages on my iMac. I never use it. I don't want it. So what would be the advantage of paying that extra money for a laptop? It would give me the advantage of a load of things I would never use, and all the things I do use and need as a writer would be worse. So for me as a professional writer, this may be £600, but it's buying the right tool to do the job. This is a difficult concept for a lot of people who like laptops, I know. But at the end of the day, if you are a professional, you don't, if you're a builder, go out and buy the cheapest electric screwdriver. You get the one that's going to last for quite a while. It may cost a bit more, but it'll be better. If you're a police officer and you need to buy firearms, you're not going to buy a firearm that's liable to break at the first time you use it because it's really cheap Chinese rubbish. You're going to buy a Glock because it's reliable and you know it'll fire every time when you draw it. And as a writer... I want something which is going to allow me to increase my typing speed, get the job done faster, and there is nothing better at it than the free write. So, I hope that answers all of those people who always ask, why would you want to spend that much money on it? That's why, because it is the job that is suitable for the task. Yes, it's a lot of money, so is everything else. Money is, you know, one of those things... Prices are going up all the time. We've got inflation. We've got that nice Mr Putin screwing up the world economy. Things are getting more expensive. But if you want the thing to do the job properly, you have to pay the money to get that thing. And so, lecture over. That's my lot. Now, I've had this free right for six to seven years. They've been going for at least a couple of years longer than that, I think. I think they were created in about 2015. So the only other side to point out is that they must be doing something right. So for all those people who say, oh, that's crazy, that's stupid, I'd never touch one of those things. Well, maybe that's because 
A, you're not a professional writer, and B, you've never tried one. Something to think about. Anyway, that's my lot for today. This has been done in a bit of a hurry because I spent all day yesterday when I should have been making a YouTube video. I took the day off and I went out with my wife and we spent the day round Stonehenge. So at the end of this video, I've got some photos for you of Stonehenge. If you're a member of English Heritage, once a year you can, if you ask, go and walk inside the Henge. In fact, inside the stone circle itself. Not touch the stones, because that would be vandalism, but you're allowed to walk around and soak up the atmosphere. So we did that yesterday. We had a great day. Thanks a lot to English Heritage. They looked after us in enormously well. And so you got some pictures of that. And now, thanks a lot for getting to the end. Um, I would just say, of course, if you like this video, do please hit the like button. If you haven't already done it, then go and hit the... What is that word? It's the bell button thing. You've got subscribe button. That's the one. Yes, hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell and tell your friends about it. And if you want to support this channel, you can go to Patreon where you'll see more photos of Stonehenge if you go there quickly. And apart from that, thanks a lot for watching. And here's Stonehenge. Thank you. Bye bye.